photographer, it was hard for me to switch first from film to digital. One of the things that I really like when I tried digital photography was you get your picture and then boom, right there, you have the results. You can see it in the moment. That's kind of, for me, the analogy that I have now with the film versus digital analysis of the proteins. That transition from film to the chemical touch um, has given me the freedom to get my data in a short amount of time in the way I want. What I try to catch in photography is beauty, beauty and colors. Nice expression. Very nice. Beautiful scenery, like the sunset, for instance. When people are happy, go to a landscape, and then I approach it like with a wide angle. And then as I'm sitting there, like you are looking at you for like some minutes, boom, something pops up. So, and I focus on that. Same in science. You start like, with the problem, you look at it from the wider perspective. And then you start like researching on that, focusing on that. And there is one moment that you see like, boom, you see that's, that's the lead. And then you follow it. Hypodiploid uh, B cell, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, is a subtype of childhood leukemia that has a very poor prognosis. And there is a big need to find new therapeutic approaches. We were able to describe the mutations that are found with hypodiploid leukemia, as well as protein alterations. So it was when we focused on the survival pathway that we saw the biggest differences between leukemic cells and non-leukemic cells. What we found is that leukemic cells are very dependent on the survival pathway, on this the BCL2 family members. And if we are able to like modulate those levels, then we reduce the pro-survival proteins, allowing the pro-apoptotic proteins, the one that induce cell death, to induce a massive cell death in these leukemic cells. And if that happens, that will inform a novel therapeutic approach. We have developed a biochemical approach and combined Western blood analysis to identify those proteins, to measure changes in those proteins. Um, but we need to quantify them. So that's when the chemidog came into play. Until then, um, Western blood quantification has been one of the hard parts to do because we had to rely on all the technologies. Now, in a routine way, we can have quantification right in the moment. With the chemidog touch, we've been able to go look at the proteins right from the membrane and be able to analyze at a quick glance and compare the levels. That has helped us focus our attention on the most relevant proteins. One of the challenges with developing film to analyze the Western blood was having a very strong band next to a very faint band wasting time with the film, exposing different films until you get the, the right image. And the problem was that it wasn't enough or it was too much or too much background. With the chemitouch, that problem got solved because in one moment you can like very rapidly get a very sensitive image and it will expose the best for each band. You can adjust, you can select the protein, you can resize the protein, you can do comparisons. So it's a very fast and very reliable way to get your protein analysis data as opposed to the old conventional film approach. What you need in science is to have a creative mind. So for me, like photography helps me develop that creative side. We do cutting edge research and for that, we need technology that allows you to like identify which is the protein, which is the pathway that is the most essential, the most relevant one. 
and getting the data in the best way, in a very visual way, that is part of the beauty of doing science. And when all that together gives you the answer that you're looking for, it just encourages you to keep going.